This is what I'm talking about. No more sitting up there, please. That tray is giving me the shit. And if you keep dropping shit and getting up and down, up and down, up and down. Why don't you go play in another room? I'll get the rest of the layout for you too. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to um, my Lego Lenticular, bit of a, a how-to. Um, so a lot of people don't know what Lenticular is. Uh, Lenticular is a form of Lego pictures or Lego mosaic pictures. It's done using a one by one slope, which in the Lego community we know as a G slope. Uh, these things are tiny 
and they can be very tedious to work with, but uh, they're not bad. So I've done a big one already and I've completed it. It is a 96 by 96, so in front of me right now is a 32 by 32 base plate. And that'll hold a total of 1,024 cheese slopes. Uh, this is one I, uh, I did some time back. It's just a little one I did as a, a display piece and was going to use it as a giveaway. So it is the mushroom from Mario World. Uh, as you can see, if you turn it to one way, and I hate this works, I'm so sorry people, but I'm working with the camera from a different angle. And it's going to make it so hard to uh, get this right. And there's so much of a delay in what I'm trying to do. Hopefully this works. Sorry for the reflection of the uh, window there. So it's basically just using cheese slopes. I've also used the brick separator which comes in most Lego kits. Um, this will help especially if you get stuck in certain positions where you've put so many of these slopes down and they are going ever over which way and they are hard to get up using your fingers so this will become your best friend. I've also designed a bit of a tool which helps to push down on the slopes to make sure they are in and if you give it a slight little wiggle it'll square them up. So I'm using one by two cheese slopes on the bottom and this helps to push them down and push into place and uh, it's good for just keeping everything in a nice straight, straight neat line and uh, it does really really well. Alright so with Lego Lenticula, a lot of people just think that when you see a picture, you build the picture to what it looks like on paper, but that doesn't always work. So in this case, I've pre-did this one. This is a what I'll be designing, or what I'll be building today. And it's the very, very small version. So if I hold it up, that way you'll get one picture. If I turn it to the other way, you'll get the other picture. And as you can see, it doesn't look all that fantastic. So I've done the Instagram and Facebook. But what I'll do is I will do it a lot bigger. Hi Steph, hi Gary. So, on this board here, I've laid out one by two in all the corners. This gives me a starting reference for when I do the lenticular piece. Now, when you do a lenticular piece and the picture you work with, it'll be 12 by 12 or 12 by 13 or 12 by 24. Um, so whatever you do, you've always got to double the height, not the width, but the height. So if this is 12 high, you want to make it 24 high. If it's 12 across, you leave it as 12 ac across. But with a 12 across, you leave a gap because you've got to do your next picture beside it and turn the slopes in the opposite direction so you get the second picture. So as you can see with the Facebook picture and the Instagram picture, all the slopes are together and they're only done in singles. We're going to reconstruct both these two pictures. We're going to use double the amount of tiles so the picture looks better when it's bigger. All right, so I'm gonna get started. I've already prepared all of my cheese slopes. I've got them all in front of me and I'm pretty much just ready to go. So I'm probably not going to do much talking. Um, I'm just going to focus on doing what I'm doing. 
and you'll see it coming together as I get through it. If there's one bit of advice I can give you, if you do lenticular, always make sure that your slopes on here, as you can see, I've done my slopes in the wrong direction to begin with. And if you do decide to display any of these, you'll find that if you hit any of these on the edge, they will pop off. If you start them with it going downwards, um, or the slope going up from the edge, it just means that if you walk past it and you lock it, it's not going to fall off. So I'm using my little one that I used, the one I built last night as my reference. This will give me all of my sizes and everything I need to do um, as I'm going along. So I'll just set that in front of me and I'm just gonna get into it. So once I've got your corners down, you can take away those, um, the bricks, because you won't need them anymore. So that's my first corner. I can take them away. Uh, the second corner is in. So as you'll see me going through, I pretty much will be leaving um, a line between each one. And this can be tedious and this can take a lot of time, but the effects in the end are so worth it. It looks absolutely amazing. I do have a big one already just uh, on the table ready to go for later on I'll show you guys what it looks like um, some of the people in chat have already um, seen this before um, I have sent them pictures and I do apologize if I uh, don't answer you back straight away but I can see the chat in front of me it's just a little bit more delayed because I'm streaming through the phone and onto the iPad so it is uh, a little bit slower and yes these things are a pain to hold on to because they are so small and it takes forever so this Facebook icon that I'm working on it's 12 by 12 so that's 24 by 24 the base plate that I'm using is a 32 by 32 and uh, once it's finished uh, it will look pretty good, but to get the end desired product and to make it really pop and make it look really well, uh, you use white slopes to finish it all off. That will just basically make everything look neat and tidy, nice and straight. Thanks, Gary. Much appreciated, mate. I'd actually, I'd like to see this one go. Uh, right out there and see how many likes and if I can get some more followers through the Lego community and just some more people interested. I know Lego is not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, there's a few of us out there that still enjoy it, even when we are older. So what's everybody been up to today anyway? Thanks, Steph. G'day Gio, how are ya? So as you can see, I'm, I'm working at a good pace. Uh, but this is only just the beginning and this one is only a small one. The big one I have on the table that has actually taken me over 12 months to do. Um, only because I've had to order in certain parts. And ordering parts from places like Germany, um, France, Sweden, America, uh, so we all do orders from around the world. Uh, if you've got kids and you do Lego uh, and you lose any parts, there's a website called bricklink.com. Um, so you can jump on there and you can order individual parts and you can actually have them shipped out to your house from anywhere around the world. So that's probably a really handy thing to know. So 
So one of these was done by Lego themselves in Denmark. And uh, they actually did a really, really good display. Uh, unfortunately, I just can't remember who done it and what the picture was. It wasn't very well publicized. It was uh, just something small that they did. I'm hoping this stream doesn't go too long, guys, because I really hope you don't get bored. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, to ask. Yeah, Gary, the um, tiles are angled. Actually, I'll use a orange one. It's, uh, it's a lot easier to see if I'm in the camera. Right. So that's what they are. They're all angled. Um, and that's what gives it the lenticular effect. You always do a lot of counting. Whenever you're doing this, you're always constantly counting to make sure that you've put a right amount in there. There's nothing worse than having to go back to get the brick separator out and to have to, to pry everything back up again. I had enough red slopes I would have done the uh, the YouTube symbol today. What hobby is that, Gary?
Ah, cool, swing into rhythm. Blue matchstick benders. 20 pounds. It's at about 25 Australian dollars. About that. Anybody who plays with uh, Lego and doing small stuff like this, you'll find shot away that you do start getting a lot of cramping through the hand. That's uh, it's always the joys and the struggles. And as you'll, if you've ever watched Lego Masters, um, I know America's done one. I think the UK has done one. Um, a lot of the builders will get cramps. Saw hands very, very quickly. Are you laughing out there, Gio? One second, guys. I've just got to uh, grab some more uh, more sleeps. I seem to have cut myself short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have. Okay, so as soon as I've cut myself a little bit short. miscalculated how many I actually needed. <sighs> it's a good thing. I came prepared. Saying that, I've always got lots around. And you're probably gonna say, holy crappers. So much. Now, I know it doesn't look like much because it's actually on a blue board and it's hard to see the blue, but once you start chucking in other colours, uh, it does break it all up uh, somewhat, and it does look pretty spectacular. Actually, uh, it's funny you say that. I've got another bag here, Gaz, that's um, actually, I'll show you. Jeremy picked up on it last night when I was streaming with him. 
And uh, it was actually quite funny because he he got the name right away. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to say the name because I kind of want to keep this as PG as possible. So it's, uh, you can say the name out loud, you can say it in chat and go for it. But, uh, there you go. Now you can have a good old laugh. So if you've ever watched that TV show, and we all know which TV show it is, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm not sure if anybody's actually keeping track of time on how I'm going for this one, how long I've been going for, but uh, I was only going to maybe I allow myself three hours to get all this done. All right, so let's see. The Facebook one done. I'll let my uh, camera catch up. Oops, that's it. Let me just move it in a little bit more. I'm gonna get that reflection off the window. I'm so sorry, guys. Yes, there's uh, the F of Facebook. Alright, let's uh let's get cracking on the uh lies. What's all lies? I have no idea what you're talking about there, Gary. Okay, so this next one it's uh only 12 long and I've had to do 13 long on this one. I could have shortened this one down to make it 12 by 12 and I probably still can to make it actually look neat but then I'd lose the, the squareness of um, the Facebook but I could probably take away say this line here move the white in and it'll look all squared up actually I might just do that now and we'll see how that works out so, taking these tiles off all these slopes off while you've got nothing in here it's really easy um, they just pop off, you pull them up from the, the back side. We'll try and keep it 12 by 12 just to make it look pretty good. That's what I need then. And for another bit of advice I can give to people who are going to try and do lenticular, um, Work with the towel underneath you. You don't get much cushioning when you're pushing everything on here, but you can push it all down later and really lock it in later on. Uh, the towel just helps to keep the pieces from flying off across the table. Uh, there's nothing worse than trying to pick up one of these little suckers off a glass or a wooden bench and they just take off like a rock across the other side of the room. It's a pain in the ass. All right. So let's get cracking on this uh, this Instagram one. I'm going to turn this picture upside down just because I'm going to work upside down and it makes it easier to follow my pattern. So let's get going. Oh. I got a feeling I haven't got enough of the, the pink tiles, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully I've done this right. And putting the tiles in on the back side is a lot quicker because they just literally just drop straight in and it works really, really well.
So again, always keep track of what you're doing. Always count, double count, triple count. Um, this isn't painting by numbers, and it shows how it feels like it some days. But again, you're always having to count. Start chucking some yellow in here. <coughs> Uh, see, I've already made my first mistake. So what I should have done is all these colors here should have been down uh, at least another three down. Um, so I could have had even edges all the way up because the Instagram symbol is not the same width as the Facebook one. So again, this is where you find your problems, you find your mistakes, but unfortunately, I mean, this is not something I'm going to keep. This is only just a, a display thing. But remember, whenever you do something, uh, you always do your counts first. And I probably should have been a lot more aware of what I was doing. But it happens. It's uh, I'm not perfect. And I never said oh, I was perfect. <laughs> so don't judge me. You know what, guys? I've um, I've already done that once, just for shits and gigs. Um, I did actually grab the board one day and I cracked it, and I actually just went. Whoosh. It's um, as you can see, it's um, it flexes quite well. Thanks, guys. Uh, so where am I up to? So six four. Uh, two, two, and two. I think I'm doing it in pretty quick time as well, which is actually not too bad. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, so we're at the twelve. It's just always remembering having to do your gaps and keep your gaps. Remembering where your colours go. Um, sometimes working to templates doesn't always work. So it's, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with that at the moment. I'll get going with some of this white. I actually thought this was going to take uh, a heck of a lot longer.
So nearly done. It's coming together really well, which is I'm happy about. Okay, so I've just realised I've uh, I've made a mistake. What I've done is I've put the white, this whole whole row of white, and this is where you're going to see the fun part. This is where you have to undo both sides at the same time, just to get your colours out and putting them back at the same time. It is a nightmare because if you don't remember to put them back, um, you're basically pretty much starting all the way from start again. So the mistake I made was just over here. I actually had to go two in and then two up and then it was this line I had to run across uh, no I'm about to make that same mistake again This is where having these boards on a harder surface actually makes it a lot easier to get these these uh, sleeves up. Well, that just took off like a rocket. Okay, so let's just figure out where I've gone wrong. And so my slopes need to go here. So I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit there. And where I actually made the mistake, I've actually made the mistake here. So I'm supposed to have two red ones in here. <coughs> I've actually got two white ones in there. So I'll just pull these ones out. So hopefully, I'm now back on track, which I am, so let's get back to it. This is the fun part of the lenticular, knowing where you've made the mistake and uh, having to rectify it before you get too far ahead. I've done pieces where I've just about finished it and realised I've made a mistake in the middle and I've had to go back and undo all of it and it hasn't been fun. Two there, two there, and two here. Two 
As you can see, it can get uh, a little confusing at the best of times. I'm making sweet progress, which is great. Uh, the orange tool there, Gary, it's called a brick separator. Um, very, very smart tool. These things are fantastic. Um, a lot of people will work with uh, just this end here. Um, and if you're ever pulling apart bricks like these ones or flat tiles, um, we tend to use the other end, which we can actually clip onto here like so, and then push down, and that actually pries it off the board without too much tension. Um, as a child, I remember using a butter knife and I don't know how many times I've nearly sliced my fingers off doing it. Um, but butter knives are never, never nice on Lego and I don't recommend anybody using a knife. So not sure what I've done, but I've uh, I've definitely miscounted the amount of bricks I've needed and what I've done because somehow or rather I've ended up with a few too many bricks than I should have had. And a few less that I actually needed. Um, so I'm not sure where I've gone wrong and what I've done wrong, but I've got colours here that I shouldn't be having. Give me one second. I'll probably go back over my mistakes later on and realize, oh crap, this is where I went wrong. This is what I should have done. All right, so that's the, the finished product. I'll just clear this off here. So from before, as you're saying, this uh, was the little one and when it's small, it doesn't look fantastic and no matter how you, you tilt it and what angle you tilt it at, uh, you just don't get that same desired effect um, from the lenticular piece. However, with this one here, once it's all completed, I hope this looks really good because like I said, I've kind of stuffed up on the Instagram one. But we'll see what happens anyway. So let's go for a tilt and see what happens. We both can experience this together. It doesn't look too bad, I guess. It looks all right. 
I probably would have changed the Facebook one. Um, but overall, that's what it is. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Now I'll show you with this other tool. I'll just move this out of the way. So once you've got it completed and you know it's all finished, this tool here is really handy. Again, this is a homemade tool. This is designed by myself. Uh, and it just makes pushing your tiles down easy. Oh, sorry, tiles. I keep saying tiles. If you keep pushing your sleeps down um, and give it a slight little wiggle, so just anywhere on there, and you just basically work it across. A little bit of pressure on there, and it squares them all up. And it guarantees it locks them all down. So once it's all finished, it looks straight, it looks neat and tidy, and nothing seems to be out of proportion. Hi, yeah, Pinky. So that's how you do Lego Lenticular. Um, now that I've completed that one, I will show you guys uh, the one that's taken me 12 months to work on. Um, and like I said, some of you have already seen this because I've already sent you guys some inboxes. Um, so you got to bear with me for a second because I've got to unplug the camera from the charger. Just and I'll just do a bit of a walk around. All right guys, so this is my piece that I've worked on for 12 months. Now this is a 96 by 96 um, board and in total, there was 9,216 individual cheese slopes or slopes. So that's looking at it from one angle. And as you pan around, sorry, I'm going to be in the way of the table. As you pan around to the other side, that's the picture on the other side. And anybody who's a Lego fan will know who those two characters are. That is Emirates and Mr. Businessman. And they are from the Lego movie. So guys, that was my Lego Lenticular. Um, thank you very much for stopping by and checking out. Um, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you know, let's try and get this out there. I want to... See a few more people jump on board and have a bit of a crack at this. Uh, and hopefully I can uh, do another one in the near future. I'll pull a few of these things apart and try doing something different. Thanks everybody for tuning in and stopping by.